tens of, of, of a percent that I was just there long enough and had just enough age that it made this big difference in what I walked away with. Mm-hmm. You know, on the other side of the ledger, you get like a little piddly lump sum and thanks a lot for all yeah, you right. you know, yeah. get out of here. Buy out so long. Yeah. yeah. And on the other side of the ledger, I got my fully vested everything that I was supposed to get as a full retiree. And that's yeah. what I was able to walk with. Gee. So that's why I say retired uh, laid off because it happened simultaneously. How about that? Um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, you look back at all this stuff, and it's like as if God was just thoroughly cherry picking and placing all these things. And no matter what jive I gave God, mm-hmm. God was patient. Right. I, 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 I said, okay, I'll retire. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you let me get that, I'll give the rest to you. Mm-hmm. But I was lying because as soon as I got laid off, I said, "Lord, I know what I said, but uh, <laughs> but but uh, addendum, yeah, but it, I'm not quite ready yet. I, I haven't really thought through how I'm going to do this move and the family and stuff. Well, so, you got to be careful there. Well, because... it, well, it's like the American Constitution, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you you, you, you can write an amendment. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. What's the preamble again? So here, here's another little amazing ditty. Mm-hmm. So I tell God, look. I know what I said, but I still need a little bit more time, you know, all right? All right. And that's well, what God says. Well, no no, no. This is this is ridic- this is how ridiculous uh I, I've been blessed. There was a guy that worked with me for the phone company when it was called Bell Atlantic. Right. Before it was Verizon. Ma Bell. Yeah. And he left during the internet boom when they were handing out jobs like paper hats. Right, yeah. And uh he went and ended up working um at Fidelity Investments. And I hadn't talked to this guy, I want to say, easily in about eight years. Oh, yeah. So when I got laid off, I decided I've worked for almost 24, 25 years. I'm going to enjoy – I got – as it typically happens, Mm -hmm. it was right around Christmas. My last day of work was like December 15th or so. Right. And I said, I'm going to enjoy Christmas with the family Mm -hmm. and not stress about any of this, and I'll get on the job search right after the holidays. Right. So I start floating my resume on Monster in the usual places, Mm -hmm. and I get a bite. And it's from Fidelity, and they they say, with your background, um, you know, as a software engineer, blah, 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 whatever, uh, we think we may have a position that would work for you. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, So I call this guy up. And I say, I know this is really like rude of me. We haven't spoken in years, but mm-hmm. I know you're at Fidelity, and I want to ask you, can you tell me about this job? Right. Because all jobs are boilerplates. They don't really tell you what the job is. Right. It's just what HR has to write up. Yeah. It's not the truth. Really. They just throw you to the sharks and yeah. see if you can swim. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, they don't really tell you everything. All right. So I start describing the job, and, uh, and he says, uh, I think I might know this group. Who is the selection manager? Mm-hmm. I tell him the guy's name. And he goes, oh, Matt, I have lunch with him every day. I'll put in a word for you. Really? So then I got a contract. Wasn't, wasn't that lucky? Well, <laughs> what are the, I mean, Fidelity, as far as I know, probably employs about 60,000 people worldwide. Oh, yeah? What are the odds that a dude that I used to work with eight years prior mm-hmm. just happens to be lunch buddies with the guy who's posting a job that I got off of the internet. Right. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? Yeah. That's, just, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I got that gig and uh, was contracting at Fidelity for a while. Mm-hmm. And so the kicker is, in March of 2008, where I kind of started this, I get um, a phone call from the, uh, from the seminary. Right. And they say, you know, um, we want to offer you a little something that might help your uh, financial um, situation as far as helping you decide if you're going to come or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking they're going to offer me some lame little summer job, um, you know, up at, uh, you know, our our camp up uh, upstate. And it'll it'll be a few dollars, but it's not going to really be much. Mm -hmm. So I call them up and they say, oh, yeah, based on your background as a corporate manager and your experiences and stuff, we have this thing called Fund for Leaders, and we're going to – we're we're offering you a a full three year scholarship for your academics. Right. Wow. Tanya and I looked at each other and said, "God can't do any more than just teleport the crib right, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. right yeah. to Philadelphia." Yeah, beam me over. That's and, right. And, and that's at right. that point, we just knew that 
I had to answer the call. Yeah, I mean, right. It, yeah. I mean, pulling all the stops out now. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, so, there comes a time when God says, "Okay, dummy, are you going <laughs> to do this or not?" Yeah. And I'm grateful that uh, I didn't have to jump over, uh, jump, you know, out of a boat into the water and get swallowed by a giant fish or anything. Uh, God was much. I'm thinking of Jonah. I mean, that was much, yeah, much, yeah. much, much, much kinder uh, than that experience. All right. You know, you know, we just harf me up down by the harbor. <laughs> yeah, you look, you look kind of, you look a little strange, old bleached. And yeah, everything. all messed up. And yeah, yeah, look yeah. like you know Michael um, Jackson. Yeah, kind you of get thing. out. Yeah, I'm Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rick James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come out the way, all y'all. I'm yeah, Rick, I'm Rick James. Yeah, hi, so, Rick. Uh, so, um, it was just amazing. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but it was just looking back as I got closer to making a decision and seeing all those little piece parts, I just realized the truth in the path where I was being led mm-hmm. and, uh, and said, okay, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to do this. Right. And so I did. How do you like that, Steve? How's that for an answer? I, I am, I am amazed, but I'm not really because, uh, a lot of the things that Rodney has said tonight kind of parallel my life. Of course, I haven't auditioned with Frank Zappa, but, uh, <laughs> uh yeah, really, I, I, I am amazed. I mean, I can remember growing up as a child and my parents sent me to bed early and I, I am a night owl and, and I would end up listening to the radio till one or two o'clock in the morning and mm-hmm. they would be in bed and I could hear my dad snoring down the hall, but, well, you can't uh, be a Lutheran preacher if you haven't <laughs> been uh, auditioned by uh, Frank Zappa, can you? Well, I, I guess that's why I'm not a Lutheran preacher. I, you know, exactly. I, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I am amazed at how God works. He, mm. he, he tends to open doors that are, um, inconceivable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. And, 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 and I don't mean to be, uh, flippant, but, mm. but that's truly the case. Uh, I look back at my life and see doors that God has opened that led me to where I am now and mm. doors that he is opening now that I am just amazed at. Mm. And, and so I, I, I listen to what you're having to say, Rodney, and, and I have to tell you that that I am I am amazed first of all that God has opened the doors and and that secondly that you were willing to go through them. Yeah, I, I like I said I just have seen so much in terms of giving yourself over to faith hmm. um, that for me it's just not in my vocabulary to say no anymore. Hmm. Um, I feel compelled to point out something though for anybody who's listening. I fully recognize that I have a very positive, uh, blessed story to tell. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's call is as smooth as mine. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, certainly true. I mean, you know, that's there, right. Everybody's call is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's some people who have come to the same point that I have through much more difficult and painful circumstances. Mm-hmm. And to me, the, the grace is in how God can use any of that uh, for you know the betterment of uh, others in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you do I, realize Rodney tonight will be asking you to uh, say the closing prayer. Well, actually, you know what? You you you, you jumped the punch on me there because you know what? One of the things that happens on the show is I, I always ask Steve to close the show with prayer, and we always end up being in a hurry uh, because we're wrapping up stuff. So you know what? Before we go uh, any further, I'm going to ask Steve if he'd pray for Rodney now. That'd be great. Would you mind, Steve? I, I no, I would not mind at all. I'm delighted to do that. All right, well, uh, you, you go right ahead and you just pray for Rodney as you feel led, brother. You know, you know, Father, I, we've been sitting here talking about journeys, uh, journeys that have led Rodney in all kinds of different directions, and and finally to you, and he is preparing now to enter into a totally different journey as he is ordained and and doesn't know where that's going to take him. Mm-hmm. And so, Lord, we just ask you to give him peace, yes. give Tanya that peace. And, and, and Lord, as you do that with, with Rodney, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to ask you to do that with all of us that are listening right now. That's right. Um, uh, there are lots of times when we're facing crises in our life, and we don't know if you're there uh, and the truth is you're always there. We sometimes can't see you, but we're just asking you to help 
not just Rodney as he moves in a different phase of his life, but all of us as we are struggling and uh, trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. Help mm-hmm. us to look to you. Uh, the whole point of this broadcast in loving, caring, and sharing is that that we share love. And Lord, we know that you are the author of love. That's right. And and the, you, by very by the by your very definition, God is love. Mm-hmm. And we forget that sometimes we we think of God, we think of you as being someone who is uh, a bully. And that's not you at all. Mm. And and so help us all to look to you and with the crises that we face in our life and all of us, mm. every single one of us, those of us that are here in this radio program now and those that are listening, we're all facing different crises and we just ask you to bless us. Yes. Help us to be open to what you want us to do mm. and help us to open our eyes to the doors that you open because they are there Mm -hmm. and we don't often see them Mm -hmm. bless and use Rodney wherever you place him and Tanya and, and just use them mightily in your service and use us all in that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, Help us to see where you want us to be Mm -hmm. in Christ's name. We pray. Amen. 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 Um, it, 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 and I will be typically British and say, Amen. Um, yeah, um, that's, and that's fine because God understands whether it's <laughs> Amen, Amen, or something else. That's right. And, and I can pretty well guarantee you have not alienated God in that. So good for you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very, very uh, difficult to alienate God. So, uh, And if Rodney does, I mean, if uh, Daniel does that, then we've got a serious problem here. Yeah. So. But even now, we're, yeah. we're, we're, you're, you're still in good shape, brother. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I wanted to... What were you going to say, Rodney? Well, a, a couple of things. Um, you know, it's it's amazing how a lot of things that have been put before me mm-hmm. will actually help me in my ministry. Uh, one of the many things that I didn't get a chance to talk about earlier, because I was going all over the place... Well, we got time. ...is that um, when I worked in a phone company, one of the many gifts that I got there was the ability to travel. Hmm. Um, it was unfortunate, but at some point when outsourcing became, um, you know, a fact of life in the corporate world, yeah, so the norm. Um, I was blessed in order um, to visit um, uh, with the uh, businesses in India and the Philippines. Oh, right. You're, yeah, you're traveling. I remember yeah. all that. Yeah, okay. And being able to see the world from such different perspectives Mm-hmm. is something that will also help me in my ministry. Mm. Um, you know, I don't want to get too far off topic, but, you know, when people think of uh, other countries, particularly like I would say in India or Philippines or something, mm-hmm. they think about the uh, some of the poverty that's there because, yes, they do have this incredible uh, surge due to IT and such, mm-hmm. um, but at the same time, there's still a lot of poverty. Sure. Um, just a rough example, I think there are, their population now is about maybe a billion, I want to say a billion six. I may be off. Mm-hmm. But in doing a paper for school, I mean. In India, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I made the observation that just simply due to the difference in the population between there and the United States, mm-hmm. there are more people living in poverty in India than the entire population of the United States. Oh, yeah. You know, there's maybe three, uh, 350 million here, give mm-hmm. or take a little bit. Right. Out to be of honest, a, I don't see how. In India, of, to be out, honest, out of, hmm? I don't see how in India because I mean India is uh, a really you know their, their GDP is more than Britain's. It, it's true, but it, again, you have to think about the distribution of that wealth. That that's right, and I'll tell you, I read an article the other day that stunned me because it said that if you own an automobile that you were in the top 5% of the world's richest people. Well, that's ridiculous, because I'm absolutely skint. And I <laughs> not yeah, but, my, but I, I'm going to tell I'm you. Sorry, I'm sorry. I am, I, I, I am one of the world's lowest of the world. You know, lowest <laughs> of the low. Well, we don't hold that against you. Yeah. O- only, within your, only within your culture, but I'm telling you, 
uh, I mean, uh, I have a lot of experience in South America, and particularly in Guyana. Yeah, I know and, you do. Steve. And and the, and the vast majority of my friends there, the mm. vast majority, 